While in France, people are rallying for a third day over the fatal police shooting of a teenager. You are seeing his mother right there leading a tribute march. A short while ago, the boy, identified by authorities only as Nahel M, is reported to be of North African descent. The shooting happened during a traffic stop on Tuesday in Nanterre, a working class town on the outskirts of Paris. French officials say the officer who shot and killed the 17-year-old acted, quote, illegally. We're now learning that the officer has been put under formal investigation for voluntary homicide. Well, protesters have set fire to several cars in Nanterre. French President Emmanuel Macron calling the shooting unjustifiable while also condemning the unrest. Our Paris correspondent, Melissa Bell, has more. Cars town halls, schools set on fire across France as rage over the police shooting of 17-year-old Nael continued into a second night. Enough to force the French president to call an emergency ministerial meeting. The last hours have been marked by violent scenes against police stations, but also schools and town halls, and basically against institutions and the Republic. It's absolutely unjustifiable. Unjustifiable. The deployment of some 2,000 police officers on Wednesday to the Paris suburbs did little to quell the anger, with 150 people detained. It's not the Republic that was in custody. It was not the Republic that killed this young man, pleaded the government spokesman Olivier Véran this morning. Another appeal in vain to calm the violence as Véran describes some of the attacks on government institutions as organized, almost coordinated. In response, a massive deployment of police forces on Thursday, some 40,000 across France, including 5,000 in Paris. But even before nightfall, a protest led by Nael's mother turned violent. Emotions still raw, even as the police officer accused of shooting the teen was placed under formal investigation for voluntary homicide. <laughs> Scuffles breaking out along the margins of the march, some 6,000 strong, according to local media. Anger on the streets of France remains all too palpable, with a family grieving and a community looking for answers as Paris suburbs and much of the country prepare for another difficult night. CNN's Melissa Bell standing by in Paris. And as I'm going to pick up with what you left off there, Melissa, community looking for answers. I'm expecting that they will come out to the streets once more. How are authorities preparing for this? Well, there are those 40,000 policemen and women that are to be uh, deployed, not just here on the outskirts of uh, Greater Paris, Issa, and those neighborhoods, those communities uh, so traditionally affected uh, by these uh, sorts of incidents and questions uh, and tragedies. Uh, there is uh, the deployment across the country, but the fear is that just as we saw last night, uh, anything that represented the state, whether it was schools, police stations, town halls, they were targeted. The expectation is that that will happen again tonight because of that deep seated anger uh, at the fact that here in France for many years, Issa, uh, despite uh, many of these tragedies over the years, uh, allegations of police brutality and fears of the systemic racism that many believe uh, 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 fuel them or allow them or certainly uh, have underpinned them are not sufficiently investigated. In fact, it is very difficult in this country to find even the words to do so, since uh, state institutions uh, cannot speak of questions of race and eth ethnicity in the, in the tradition, in the respect of the uh, uh, institutions of the Republic. People are meant to be considered equal. What that means is that any hint uh, of differences that are to do with race or religion or ethnicity are sort of drowned out. And that's part of the frustration that you're seeing in those neighborhoods tonight. We saw it this afternoon. It's likely to continue uh, tonight because that anger is something that they feel a great deal and that they have a lot of trouble getting recognized by authorities. And it has made it traditionally very difficult for the police to address uh, those yeah. issues of racism within its ranks.
We should keep, be keeping a close eye on what's happening in the streets of Paris. Thank you very much, Melissa Bell, there for us. Well, rights groups in France have been speaking out against police violence and systemic racism within law enforcement for years. I want to discuss further. Mathieu Garodiski is an expert on security and police issues, as well as a political science researcher at the University of Versailles. Mathieu, great to have you on the show. I, I mean, I want to get your thoughts, Hello. if I could start off with, uh, with this tragic incident, of course, that's fueled this anger that Melissa was talking about and this rage. Uh, it's fair, I think it's fair to say that it, there's been a discrepancy from what the video of the traffic, traffic shop show and the police uh, initial statement. What are your thoughts as you looked at that video? Well, there is, there is indeed an, uh, a discrepancy between the initial statements of uh, the police officers that said that the the car was about to hit them and the reality, what the video shows. Well, what I thought, well, obviously, uh, it's not a self-defense case. It's not a self-defense case in the sense that I don't think that the physical integrity or lives or the police officers were in danger when they, when one of them decided to, to fire one round uh, from his pistol. Uh, my belief is that the defense, uh, and basically this is the statement that the imprisoned police officer, that the one that is currently in custody, um, made, is that the driving was of that young man was extremely dangerous, and he was not supposed to be driving in the first place because he's 17. In France, you have to be 18 to have a driver's license, and that he was posing a danger, a threat to the surrounding potentially to surrounding people, to bystanders, to people who were walk, walking in a public space, uh, which is why he used his uh, firearm. And in France, since 2017, it is allowed to open fire on a vehicle if that vehicle is basically fleeing, is not compliant, and posing a danger to, a physical danger to people around. Uh, but, you, you know, you lay down the defence, which looks incredibly flawed. I mean, it's not really reasons to be shooting someone just because he's underage for driving. But, you know, this is not, Mathieu, and I think Melissa touched on this, this is not an isolated incident. You know, today, Tuesday's killing, I should say, was uh, the third fatal shooting during traffic stops in France so far in 2023. Last year, there were a rec record 13. I mean, this suggests, Mathieu, doesn't it, that there's something wrong? Yes, th this is why actually I mentioned the 2017 law. Uh, the 2017 law um, caused a, m a massive increase of those of those shootings. Uh, before uh, 2017, 2016, you had basically 120, 130 shots fired at uh, vehicles in France. In 2017, the law was passed in early 2017 that number increased to 202. And indeed, we went from basically one, two people killed every year during those incidents to above 10, which, of course, is much lower than what it is in the United States, for instance. But by French or even European standards, this is pretty high. If you compare with Germany, yeah. Germany has almost none every year. And the law clearly is a huge part of the problem, uh, as you're stating there, or one part of the problem. The other is, as I heard several of the protesters on our air say today, they, they've been to, talking about institutional racism and, and, pro, and profiling, racial profile. One man said, we are all, you know, Nael is all of us, I think was what he said. Is the French police then force institutionally racist? Okay, you're right. This is part of a broader picture and, and something that started about 40 years ago. Uh, so basically, for, for the international audience that is watching us, you, you have to understand that French suburbs around big uh, urban areas in France, you have, in the suburbs, you have big housing projects, very large housing projects, where immigrants... Uh, are where many immigrants are located, basically mostly manual workers. Mm -hmm. And for the past 40 years, yes, there have been major tensions between the police and the first, second, now third generation immigrants. And when I'm saying immigrants, it's predominantly from the former colonial areas uh, of France, meaning North Africa and Sub-Saharan uh, Africa. And yes, police stops are a very big problem in France, are a very big bone of contention between those youth and the police. Uh, 
Uh, you said there, there are in your report, or I think it's your, your report on the ground that said there are no statistics uh, in France about that. It's true, there are no official ones, but us academics have the right to collect data about that and, and to conduct research about that. And uh, well, depending on the research, depending on the, on the era, you have basically uh, something like eight to 10 times more, uh, a ten to th I'm sorry, a 10 times higher likelihood to be checked, to be stopped and searched by the police if you're of Arab or African origin. Very interesting. I'm, I'm, unfortunately, we don't have time uh, for more, but I really find this absolutely fascinating, what this means and what the law, what Macron can do, whether it's political appetite for this. Fascinating. Mathieu, really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Thank you, Mathieu. My pleasure. Goodbye.